At Lexus, service isn't just a department. It's a voice on the other end of the phone. A note to say you're on our mind. A willingness to come to you. The world and how we interact with each other is changing, but that will never change who we are at Lexus. Now, more than ever, you and your needs come first. Find out what service options are available in your area at Lexus.com forward slash people first. Click the banner to discover more. Yo, good morning. Welcome to Old Men Yellow Cloud. It's Patrick doing your pick this week, but I got some cool beans with me. I got Christopher. I am no bean. All right. Yeah, never mind. I take that back. That was stupid. I have, I have some cool uh, legumes with me. I got Christopher. I am a legume. <laughs> and also Jim. Man, I'm bummed. I totally had something queued up for... Uh for the intro, and uh, I blew it, and I didn't cue it up in time. We can do this, it again. I wonder if this will work. That's fine. I it, this, this is going great so far. No, that's not what I wanted. What the <laughs> fuck is that? <laughs> that's so rude. That, yeah, that you didn't want that? <laughs> no <laughs> shit. <laughs> Who would want that? <laughs> it was, uh, I was going to just do, like, dolphin noises. Was that turtle sex? No, that was dolphins. Oh. It was dolphin sex. Was it sex or was it like? Have you ever just seen them like fucking around? Have you ever seen videos of uh, pandas having sex? It looks like two people in costumes. Yeah, <laughs> it's I ridiculous. Think I have seen that. <laughs> now he's doing the windy shuffle. Oh, <laughs> Twenty six could do. <laughs> well, uh, happy to say I also have a, a, a very good friend here as our special guest. Uh, plays drums for just Witch very Cake. good, not an excellent friend. Oh, he's excellent Come on. too. Gotta give him more credit than that. Very good is like, it, it, I don't know, when I say very good, like, that means it, that's like top tier. Okay. <laughs> he, he is a Joel S, but he's actually the second Joel S that we're having on the program. Oh, God. Joel Silloway, this time around. I'm not a legume, I'm a bean. You're, you're, <laughs> I'm a bean, lima bean. Mm, no, is after I anything? saw that Jimmy Neutron episode, I can't do anything with lima beans anymore. Oh, what happened? They just were scary, and they were under the bed. And Jimmy fucked one. Mm. That would happen. I think that, that is was... that canon, or <laughs> was that? A... <laughs> that might have been on Adult Swim afterwards, actually. Excellent. That's actually the clip from Jimmy Neutron right there. Yeah. The dolphins freaking the fuck out. Wow. He's dolphins so are fucking about... terrifying. What was he so upset about? I don't know, but I would never want to be in the water with a dolphin. I've yeah. been in the water with a dolphin. I put my thumb in his blowhole. Did you really? Yeah, he bit me. Is this? This is not true. Was it a nice bite though? Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) No, but I did do like the dolphin encounter (laughs) in the Bahamas. Does it include the the like the digital insertion (laughs) into the blowhole? What? (laughs) Digitalizing like with fingers? Yeah. Oh. (laughs) It's like what kind of fucking. AI <laughs> bullshit are you talking about right now? No, no, like digits, like your fingers. I've got to say, too, Dalton Encounter has a sort of like lascivious... Dalton Encounter? Yeah, Dalton that, Encounter. That sounds like a fucking Timothy, like well, Timothy Dalton James Dal- Bond. Dalton thing. Encounter. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you said it was a, do- a Dolphin Encounter, yeah. right? Yeah, it sounds like fucking lascivious and like some sort of adult ad. I don't know what that you, word means. It means like horny. Just think of oh, it as horny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I can see that. No, I got a picture somewhere of my fat little twelve-year-old self hugging a dolphin. I want it. I need <laughs> proof for no other reason. <laughs> oh God! 
Uh, <clears throat> so this is pretty fast for us to get this fucking gross. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking terrifying though, because they like they get they line ten people up on the side of this dolphin pool, and the dolphins do all kinds of tricks. So they're in captivity. Yeah, well, they they are and they aren't. It's like they could. Yeah, they're in captivity. Yeah, could they escape and swim away? Or? Yeah, if they wanted to, they could. I mean, they're 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 pretty crafty. They they plot. They yeah. plot and scheme all the time. I don't trust. Like them. the the water, like coming up to the pool, was all ocean water, and there was just like a kind of like fence. Like, that would go out to the ocean that they could easily jump over if they really wanted to. Yeah, they could, like, the free willy cover. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But why don't they? Because Michael Jackson's not playing. Well, they got people putting their fingers <laughs> in blowholes, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, you're getting your blowhole work. They get all the fish they can eat. It's, it's kind of people tossing fish to them all day. They don't have to do any work. That's, what, that's the life I want to live. That's how environments get ruined, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they were like they were like, you know, the dolphin would come and come up to you and they'd be like, Oh, put your put your hand and feel the dolphin's teeth. Feel how sharp these dolphin teeth are. What the f- uh, and what? you were twelve? Something like that, yeah. I mean, I guess age doesn't really matter, but it kinda does. Like that's that's fucked hey, up. Kid, they have why you- don't you run your fingers through these teeth? Yeah, and if you want, sharp. stick your thumb in its blowhole. <laughs> you got that glint in your eye, kid. I know you're thinking about it. I was staring at it. I was watching it pucker. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. What a great resort that must have been. <laughs> yeah, that's the sound the dolphin made. <laughs> God. Uh, we are, we are a music, uh, music podcast. So there was a... There was a <laughs> and I know Christopher hates King of the Hill, but there was an episode of King of the Hill where, where uh, Hank gets in the dolphin tank and the dolphin tries oh. to fuck him. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember. And uh, I Leanne tries to call like when animals attack or whatever. She wants to send the video to when animals attack. Oh wow! How did I forget about when animals attack for a second? That was a, that was a uh, that was quite a phenomenon. Yeah, those <laughs> were like that was a great was show. A, was it actually a show or was it a series of specials on Fox? It was a series of specials, but it was like it was great because they were like you know they'd have this video footage of an elephant and they like beating the elephant. And they were like nobody knew that the elephant was going to turn on them. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, if you're beating the elephant, <laughs> odds are it's going to get angry about that. Yeah, I'd and I want to strike you down. I want to you know? say it was that John Bernelli guy from the fucking world's wildest police chases too i feel like he's let's just see all- what happens when this to this scumbag when the police <laughs> catch him <laughs> that guy yeah that guy i feel yeah. like he's like the narrator of all that those fucking shows y- yeah he's uh he's incredible i guess you shouldn't be poor <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a uh there was a clip on uh one of those shows of uh russian tv and it was like some talk show and it was fucking incredible because there's like a talk show host sitting there and then there's the couch for the guests and the first guest was human, and the second was a bear just sitting on the couch. Oh, this is Gentle Ben. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, might have been, but uh, he wasn't too gentle that day, because after a little while, the bear just kind of looks at the guy sitting next to him and just takes its paw and, like, knocks him off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, yeah. you remember Gentle Ben, right? From The Simpsons? Oh, yeah, yeah, He's yeah. He's got yeah. the microphone on his head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was great. Uh, so, got no, back ben. to... Uh, Tag back to uh, the fact that we're a music podcast. We're here talking about <laughs> uh, the debut studio album by British rock band Dire Straits, uh, which is it's also just called Dire Straits, uh, released on October 7th, 1978 by Vertigo Records, uh, internationally Warner Brothers Records in the U.S. and Mercury Records in Canada, for anyone who cares. Uh, the album produced the hit Sultans of Swing, which reached number four on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and number eight on the UK Singles chart. Uh, the album reached number one on album charts in Germany, Australia, and France, number two in the U.S., and number five in the U.K. Uh, dire Straits was later certified double platinum in both the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, dire Straits came about through a musical collaboration between brothers Mark and David Knopfler, uh, forming the band sometime in 1977 and after a few months of rehearsals. Uh, the band borrowed enough money to record a five-song demo tape, which included the song Sultans of Swing. They took the tape to disc jockey Charlie Gillette, who had a show called Honky Tonk on <laughs> BBC Radio London. Of course he did. Of course he did. <laughs> Fucking Charlie Gillette. Uh, the band respected Gillette and sought out his advice. Gillette liked what he heard and started playing Sultans of Swing on his show. Two months later, Dire, uh, dire Straits signed a recording contract with the Vertigo Records division of Phonogram Incorporated. Uh, and 
In a retrospective review for All Music, Stephen Thomas Erlewine gave the album four out of five stars, calling it remarkably accomplished for a debut. Erlewine praised Knopfler's spare, tasteful guitar lines and his husky warbling and his inclination toward Dylan-esque imagery, which enhances the smoky, low-key atmosphere of the album. I uh, I'm, I didn't know till today that they were fucking British, and I feel like an idiot. Because they got that... I just always grew up thinking that they were an American band. Yeah, they were... Uh, they were an American band. They definitely have like a pretty strong roots rock sound, but um, yeah, they were kind of in the same scene as like, uh, like Elvis Costello, Joe Jackson, and like... You, and like you know, all, even like Gang of Four and, and like you know these post punk groups, they're all kind of in the same scene. That'd be such a fucking wild bill. Oh, I know. Seeing like Gang of Four <clears> back <throat> then, when like uh, fucking Andy Gill was like cutting himself on stage. Yeah. And like <laughs> then like Dire Straits play. Yeah. <laughs> and Mark Knopfler's cutting himself on stage. Those, <laughs> those are some good early shows. That'd be great seeing him just like politely playing guitar with his fingers, and then yeah. he just pulls out a blade and like cuts himself, and then just plays Sultan's a swing. <laughs> See my my visual it's a six blade knife. Whenever yeah. I hear Sultan's a swing, all I think about is just like four dads standing around drinking I'm like Budweisers. Too, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you oh, just hear it playing in the distance while there's like a fire crackling somewhere. Yeah, it's definitely one of those songs that that's still to this day I, in my fucking. Uh, HVAC office management job like I hear it in on 105.7 every single day. <laughs> they played it on, on that same 60 song playlist. Yeah. 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 Um, to harken back to the last episode we, we recorded here, which might be being released in the future. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I had a shitty job at a sub shop and uh, in high school and they had Eagle 93.7. Christopher 7. showed his boss porn. It was crazy. Uh, so that's sort of true. He was uh, 16. What actually Guys, happened... this episode is going to come up before that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No spoiler alerts. All right, no spoiler alerts. I didn't show my boss porn. He showed me porn. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> was it dolphin porn? Uh, no, it was not. All right. Good, un- yeah, unfortunately, because right. that would have been it interesting. Was, it was a different water Is mammal. Tommy Lee a dolphin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he might be. What a timestamp that is to like tell that story and be like, oh, yeah, it was the Pam and Tommy sex tape. It's like, oh, okay, so that was in 1997, I see. <laughs> yeah, sex tapes aren't really like a big thing anymore. Like, No, now it's sex MP4s. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like feet pics. Everybody's putting them out. I got them. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> Cat underscore SB for more. But yeah, this was, this was another song that was on the those playlists yeah. uh, that I heard all the time. But I actually liked it, so it didn't offend me. Yeah, it's I, a good one. It's I've, a timeless always, tune. I do, <laughs> I, I do love that tune. Uh, I, I've loved it since I was a young scamp. But uh, let's talk about favorite songs on this record. And this time, I guess I'll start with Christopher. Ooh, yeah. lucky me. Uh, I'm gonna go with Six Blade Knife. Yeah, that fucking loungy sort of laid back groove, that that uh, that thumping bass. Yeah, that uh, that really uh, did it for me today. Yeah, that's that's a great vibe to that song. I I think when when I first listened to this album, uh, that was the song that I kind of that kind of made me perk up and notice that there was like a little bit more going on than just like Sultan's a swing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's got it's got a great vibe to it. It's pretty like minimalist too, because it's just like kind of brushed drums and and bass and like a little bit of like light guitar work going over it, and just making use of the room. And the yeah, reverb. the uh, the rhythm guitar in it was like barely there. Yeah, it was, uh, it was super cool. How it was just sort of like hanging on by a yeah. thread. And even even his vocals are were like super pushed back and, and just like he's kind of just like barely speaking above a whisper on it. Yeah, no, it was. Um, this is a very dynamic album, and uh, I appreciate that. Jim, I'm gonna go with Sultans, man. You get a shiver in the dark. It's raining in the park. But meantime, so I love the river. Up and you hold everything. I 
Man is blowing Dixie double fall time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's a uh, <laughs> it's a great tune, and it's uh, it's got that buffet style that I'm looking for. You know what I'm talking about? No, explain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it's on the next episode, so you need to it's got explain all, this it's again. Got all, it's got all the flavors that I want. Yeah, good drums, good good guitar work. <laughs> that just good, sounded so gross. Good potatoes. Yeah. Said it. Oh, it's got all the flavors that I want. <laughs> yeah. Got you know, all the flavors that I want. They got that, like those marinated mushrooms in the buffet, and they got. Have you ever been to Fogo de Chow? That's the kind of buffet I'm talking about. <laughs> what? Fogo de Chao. You know, Sultan's a Swing, the, the Latin song. <laughs> Fogo de Chao? Yeah, the Brazilian Steakhouse. Oh, where is it? Uh, this It's a chain, but they've got one in um, Back Bay. Oh, okay. No, I have It's very good. I highly recommend it. Okay. Like, they lit... So, there's a big buffet of, like... They, you got vegetables and fruits and like mushrooms and all kinds of stuff, and you can make a plate. And then they come around with different cuts of meats, and they go, "Do you want this?" And you go, "Yes, I do." And they cut you off a piece. And there's a little like coaster that's green or red, and if you if you want them to come to you, you, yeah, you put, put it in green. In green, you know? yeah. I've, I've heard about that style of restaurant. Before. Oh, it's fantastic. Did you ever go to Oliveira's with uh, Todd and I? No, uh, that's the place in Somerville, Somerville, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, um, you basically fill your plate, and they weigh it, and that's how they charge you. <laughs> but yeah, they've got like carving stations where they'll just like carve any meat yeah. that they oh, have that's there. that's dangerous. Yeah, it's it's insane. We should go, we should fucking go to Fogo de Chao. Although oh, last time I went to Fogo de Chao, I had a massive gout attack, so. <laughs> but I still don't know if that's the, the shrimp or the beef or it's probably coming to but uh, you know, I, I like it, and I'm going to continue to eat it. So fuck you, gout. Right, just flip the plate to red once in a while. You yeah, know? just then once you'd be in a while. Okay. Yeah, just get some <laughs> breaths in between. Yeah, we should do that. Um, but yeah, no, Sultan's. Uh, it's a great tune. <laughs> yeah, I, I. That's another one of those tunes that I've loved since I was a kid, and just like has always kind of stuck around in my head. It's just, yeah, it's like a fun, bouncy little number. It is very bouncy. Yeah, it's, it's a little bun shaker. Yeah, it's just got like <laughs> a little bun shaker. Yeah, it's like the drums are kind of like they're they're just like cute and doing their thing, and like the like the guitar solo, the guitar the guitar work is fucking amazing on it. And tell, it's tells a, it's a, it's, like, it's it's like kind of tells a story, but not really. It's a, it's another hilarious. one of those like dad songs where yeah. it's like oh these four dads are in a band and they're like. And you the know. BPM is just high enough to be like, oh, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just a little bit, yep. a little bit brighter yep. than than uh, than the other tracks. Yeah. Uh, Joel, what was your favorite song? So I was kind of between two. It was Wild West End and Six Blade Knife as well. Wow. And I think I'm gonna have to agree with uh, Chris. Let to be free of it, babe. I don't want it no more. Do six blade knife, and I think for me the reason I mean you guys touched on it already, but they just were able to carve out a space that none of the other songs had. Yeah, it absolutely. just was completely different. I mean the the soft touch with the bass and pretty much just the vocals and just chilling on one two three four with the drums. I mean just bass and snare pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, and then also for me, uh, just the ending too, that the groove that they were able to lock into and just take it to the end. I don't know. Yeah, yeah they they. They do that thing where they kind of like go on the four yand and then, and then start the lick over again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was great. And that one too, I uh, I just paid attention to and I had to grab the like actual album and be like, oh, what song is this? And that only happened maybe a, twice, I yeah. think, or three times. So I was just like, yeah. You cared enough to know the title. Yeah, yeah. No, that was good. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Uh, yeah, I... Yeah, Pete Trap. What's your favorite song? Yeah, I'm. I was kind of having trouble thinking of which one to pick. Uh, Set me up gets me like super um, amped up every time I listen to it. It's just it just has such a fucking killer groove to it, and uh, and, and yeah, like the vocals are like just kind of like barely in the mix, so it kind of just has this like weird detached element that always like makes me pay attention to it a little more. Uh, but I think I'm gonna go with in the gallery. Back 
I liked that song. Like that, that song, song was, was just stanky as fuck. Funky. And like super, yeah, just a- after Sultan's a Swing, it, it, it's like a little more aggressive than, than the rest of the record, too. And it just has that great sort of like pseudo reggae groove to it. And yeah, just pocket for days. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, just like great guitar work, super snarly. And, and his vocals are just, you know, well, acerbic as ever. Yeah, they stand out on that one a lot more, I think. Yeah, Joel, you said uh, it was Dorsey, and yeah, I definitely heard that in the vocals. Yeah, it was exactly. very Jim Morrison y. He had parts where he just decided, like, oh, I'm really going to go for it. And yeah. just, like, you know, he actually just sang out a whole lot more. Because I feel like he has some moments where it's almost like talk singing. Like oh, he, yeah. he he's just doing wants the to tell thing. Yeah. yeah, he just wants to tell a little story, and, <laughs> and he's got that kind of like the whole band kind of has that jangly southerny, mm. kind of weirdly almost American. Yeah, South very folksy. Vibe. Yeah, folksy vibe to it, and that song just didn't. He was just like, I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive in certain spots, which is cool. Yeah, that's a great tune. All right, Christopher, least favorite. Least favorite. Um, we might have a. Uh, we might have a. Um, Unanimous. A unanimous yeah, what, on what this is one? That, is, that, is that is that what a caucus is? <laughs> I think. I don't uh, well, we'd know. have to wait a couple weeks for that. Quorum. To come out that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> quorum is what I'm thinking. A quorum. Yeah. A quorum. Yeah. I think we have one. Uh, Southbound again. where I barely noticed that it was happening. Yeah, I'm going to have to jump on that train, um, that southbound train. Um, <laughs> I didn't even know what happened because <laughs> Patrick got up to flip the disc and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I'll jump on that one again. Oh. You know, same deal. It just, the song went by and I, I, I don't know. I think I just like blacked out. <laughs> yeah, like were we no- like abducted by aliens just, for four minutes? Just nothing <laughs> happened. Yeah, maybe I just zoned out. Like uh, the coffee just left my body. I don't yeah. know. Something happened, but pizza sat in. Like I, I don't know, but it, it just went by. Just went yeah, right I was back. having a euphoric moment to be honest because I haven't had like pizza in a while, and that's not true. I had pizza when I was at your place last weekend, Christopher. But yeah, you did. We we haven't. I haven't had like old men pizza. It, that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had old men pizza in a while, uh, and it yeah. just really was like, oh god. Now I can't eat anything for the rest of the day. Uh, Verona pizza is fucking legit, though. That's just, that stuff is so good. It's that good ass Greek local pizza. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's unanimous, which is great because it makes it easier to edit. <laughs> <laughs> Southbound again. Uh, yeah, and, and I think it, it sounds too much like setting me up and it's not as exciting of a song. It, just, it, it definitely feels like filler. Uh, it doesn't really do much. It kind of just, it, it does a lot of, it touches on a lot of the same things as setting me up where it's like just A and D over and over and yeah, it's just not as compelling. Christopher, what was your MVP moment? Uh, I'm going to be a basic bish here, and uh, I'm going to go with the lead riff uh, hook from Sultans of Swing. Sultans of Swing. It's, uh, it's a, there's a reason that song's a hit, and I'm going to say it's that guitar riff. That guitar riff is fucking dope. It is. Great, catchy little lick. Yeah, mm. for sure. Jim. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go with a moment in Sultans of Swing, but it's not actually a musical moment. It's the uh, the line I was talking about where they're talking about Harry and how he doesn't mind that he if he makes the scene. Because <laughs> he's got a daytime <laughs> job. He's doing just fine. And Harry doesn't mind if he doesn't make the scene. He's got a daytime job. He's doing all right. And I've explained that to my band because that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> the song is kind of like a more, it's like a 
more detached and cynical the boys are back in town yeah <laughs> like, it kinda has yeah. That, like the lyrics kind of have that same sort of vibe to it but it's just like they're they're so much less engaged where like you know the boys are all excited and, and ready to fucking i don't know assault that one girl but she fucking hits him right back which is nice you know that line yeah <laughs> yeah okay uh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I always got a kick out of out of the sort of picture that Mark was trying to sing in this song, where it was yeah, they just sound like a bunch of old fucks who don't want to deal with the the new the new kids in town in their yeah, brown baggies. What's in the brown baggies? I don't know. I don't know if it was their pants. Is it a tuna sandwich? It might be poop that they're intending to light on fire <laughs> and put the on workers someone's doorstep. Lunch, you know, yeah. yeah, tuna sandwich. I'm going with that. Yeah. Uh, tuna glands uh <laughs> gross <laughs> joel do you have a mvp moment this is a very seafoody episode here i don't know what's going on tuna glands <laughs> the nautical. last one was as well it's pretty weird yeah. we were talking yeah. about fish for a while yeah, i like it um i think my mvp moment well i have a real one and i have a fake one so i'll do the <laughs> real one first is i think i like the the finger guitar work in um wild west end <laughs> Just those little fills. I, yeah. It's just very simple, but like the song was different with like the steel guitar, had a totally different vibe to it. Uh, his, he was telling a story with it, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was just like, Bow! and you're like, oh, 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 I love that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's just those little fills just made it. And I think my fake MVP moment was what you mentioned at the beginning of the episode, Pat, where uh, the band was able to raise enough money in a few months to record their first album. Oh my lord! Yeah, let's give it up. What kind of Kickstarter did they have back then? My God, a few months. <laughs> well, that was like they probably just got their bloke to do it for like six bucks an hour or so. The shit, like. Yeah, maybe it's something like that. I don't know. London, you know. Think of the exposure if we hit it big. Maybe, maybe it was that kind of deal. Yeah, we gotta have a dad rock song about the new kids. <laughs> Yeah, every, everybody's itching to get that. that. Where my mind went with that was, uh, we got to have a dad rock song about the new kids on the block. <laughs> I love it. That would be really good. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've ever heard a new kids on the block song. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just block them out is really what's happening. I don't know that's, I mean, I know that, like, hook, but I don't know. I've never the listened right to stuff. that song. The right stuff. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, man. I'm just trying to help. (laughs) (laughs) We need a nap. (laughs) We're getting cranky. Um, It's old men take a nap. (laughs) Old men take a nap. Sleep on the cloud. Uh, My MVP moment uh, sucks because I I was going to pick something from Sultan's a Swing, but like pretty much everyone else picked something from that. So I'm going to go with the just like the general vibe, but like especially the bass tone in Six Blade Knife because. That was the song that kind of uh, pulled me in and, and made me want to listen to this record more uh, after like listening to it for the first time. And yeah, kind of just like one of those sonic moments that showed me that you know there is more going on uh, with these guys who you know kind of have a tendency to have similar sounding samey songs, but like yeah, that 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 like soundscape really stood out. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Yeah, very like late seventies, very very much like like kind of no high end on the bass, like very like tight drums. Uh, it's that like sort of vibe that you were getting on like Fleetwood Mac or even, like Linda Ronstadt had a record out that year that had similar sonic footprint. Uh, all right, what do we do now? Are we rating this already? No, Com- comparable. 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 Oh, but, but, yeah, and, uh, speak, speaking of Fleetwood Mac, uh, I'm going to go with Rumors for mine, uh, just because sonically I think there's a lot of common ground there. Yeah, for sure. For uh, sure. Especially in the production level. Uh, not as much on the songwriting, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's, it's a there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan's 1983 album, Texas Flood. Ooh, yeah, there we go. It's pronounced Flood. Yeah, fluid. <laughs> yeah, kind of. There's fluid and down in Texas. <laughs> yeah, I think I was talking about that during the listen where, where the, uh, yeah, there's uh, very like compressed Stratocaster yeah. sound. You could, you could definitely Absolutely, hear yeah. like SRV took some notes from that. All right. Uh, this one was kind of hard for me actually because yeah. it's my first listen to this and I honestly don't have too many things that I know from that time period in that area. But when I listen to, um, what song was it? Water for Love. It almost made me 
feel like it sounded like the Pentangle. I don't know if you guys know who that is or not. No, what? not for really. <laughs> Yeah. So I'll check it out later. They're pretty awesome. But they're more um, uh, folk inspired, I guess. Mm. Definitely less of the um, guitar, more acoustics yeah. and whatnot. But the production was a little bit similar. Um, and the feel really more of water uh, of love, I think, was kind of that vibe for me. Yeah, that song but, is was like it, it has a dobro on it, so it's yeah, it got that folksy vibe to it. Yeah, it yeah. was a dobro. I was gonna ask, and then for some reason, I just didn't. A fourteen <laughs> fret dobro or, or some shit like that. I think that's what I saw. Little tiny guy, probably like a little tenor dobro or some shit. Something that the presidency of the United States of America would use. The the band. Yes. No, I mean the the people, like James Pope and Bernard yeah. Fillmore, and they all yes. got together. They got a yeah. They they played the dobro. They have like them. a big polyphonic spree esque band up in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's twee pop. That yeah. seems fitting. So we we got like four of them that are alive. So yeah, there's like forty forty one of them in heaven just yeah. forming this chorus of dobros. Yeah, George H W just went up there to. Yep, and, he, on... and he picked up his axe and joined right in. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he, did he did he die? H W? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did not, I miss that? Not, not like the younger one, the older one. No, I know, but when did that happen? Like a year ago or something. Oh, yeah, maybe was, I do remember. I think it was that. like last December. Yeah, it was, it was last December. And hey, yeah. Barbara's gone too, right? Yeah, she yeah. sure has. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's Jeb is still alive and well. Thank it's coming goodness. back. I'm voting for him this year. <laughs> You're not voting for Ted Cruz? Is he running? I don't know. Ooh, <laughs> that's I, a you know that's a spicy pick right there. Yeah, that yeah. is. <laughs> if you ever wanted to vote for the actual Zodiac killer, <laughs> kind of just like I don't know what happened to him, but like, oh poor Ted, he like, that little guy. Well, he like started kind of like playing into the weird meme culture that was surrounding him and it was like yeah. weird because he, yeah he started like making jokes about being the zodiac killer too did you see the video of him imitating various characters from the simpsons oh no it's like him in like a professional <laughs> studio like doing this like they were like cruz yes. the presidential candidate ted cruz yes and this was when he was running what? <laughs> yeah, I know that. Well, that uh, like we, we, we can look it up right after this is over. <laughs> Good God. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe, yeah, maybe I should vote for Ted Cruz this year, but I, I'm, I'm still pulling for Jeb. I, I'm going really to vote for go. Ross Perot, strictly based on the all that sketches. Is he? Uh, he's dead, right? No, I think, I think he's still alive. Uh, we need to know. Uh, yeah. All right. Dang, I'm still alive. <laughs> Wait, is Hannibal Burr's running? Is he not? No, he's not Hannibal in the Burr's? Yeah, right, no. Was he running for president? At some I don't point? know. I guess I won't vote for anybody then. All oh, right, shit. do we uh, do we have any guesses as to Ross Perot dead or alive? Wanted, dead or alive? I'm gonna say I don't. I think he's still alive. Yeah, I'm going alive as well. I'm pretty sure he's alive. Died July 9th of last year. Wow. wow. Wait, what? Yeah. We, we're How do I smart. not remember that? Mandela effect. Wow. He died last year, and I don't remember that at all. God damn. Well, pour one out for Ross Perot, guys. <laughs> uh, my comparable record is going to be uh, kind of a weird one. I'm going with television's second record, Adventure. Ooh. Uh, not Marquee Moon, but uh, their second one that I think came out in like 1979. Uh, it was like a lot more kind of mellow, mm-hmm. not not quite as like angular and abrasive, but it's kind of like similar, like, clean guitar work uh the song lions for some reason really reminded me of television for some reason something about the the like the way the rhythm and the lead guitars were kind of mm-hmm. uh I, oh yeah there was like some guitar harmonics happening in it too and like television was doing a lot of that at that uh at points on, on those two records yeah and just kind of like a similar guitar tones and and like just general vibe general sort of like pub rock vibe that they got Christopher, how's it going? Yeah, you know, all right. I got this rash that keeps coming back. Oh, you still got that, huh? Yeah. So, uh, what are you going to do about it? i uh, probably use some special cream. Where is it? Uh, genitals. Mm. No, no, the cream. Where is where's the cream? <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, where, <laughs> where, where do you get the cream is what I was, yeah. Uh, from a special doctor. A genital doctor? A genital doctor. Yeah, he um, works at the genital hospital. <laughs> a, a gentle, gentle Suck genital doctor <laughs> who works at the genital hospital. Uh, no, I don't have a rash, but I am going to give this album a seven. Nice. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed it. Um, could potentially grow with other listens. I'll definitely actually listen to this one again. Um, yeah, it, it was enjoyable. I liked 
uh, the minimalism of it all. And yeah, there were some songs on this that I genuinely really liked off the uh, first listen. So seven for me. Jimmy. I'm also going to give it a seven. And uh, like I was saying when we were listening to it, it's definitely one of those albums like I can just picture like, you know, you're hanging out at the campfire and it's on in the background and you're just everybody's just kind of quiet and zoning out listening to do it. It's that kind of album. And yeah, uh, it, it it's got a, some smooth, nice wind down tunes to it. Yeah, it doesn't like it, it doesn't like ask too much of you sonically. Yeah. I guess we're like it's very consistent and like almost on the verge of being samey, but it's it, it works in, in like how it, it, it kind of could just go in the background and be like a good vibe record. Yep. I think that's what they were trying to accomplish ultimately anyway. Yo. I think for me, I'm actually going to give it a six. All right. And. I usually like listening to things all the way through, but I feel like it could still potentially grow on me a little bit more. But I think there's just pockets of the like sonic landscape that they hit that I just liked so much more than others. Right. And I don't want to just be picking and choosing through certain parts of it. But I mean, you know, everyone's got their favorite song. So I think uh, that's kind of where it stands for me. But I would agree that it's very nice kind of like like chill out to kind of record and you definitely need those like you could definitely cook to this you know yeah. or like you said yeah. like campfire or i do all the it's, time actually yeah, I, put, a, I put this record it's on awesome. and i cook all the time yeah but for me i think where i'm at i've just been so used to something that demands a little bit more out of me and sure. there wasn't a moment in there that i was kind of looking for that really popped right there really wasn't anything that took it to like just like just past the normal uh, I don't know, maybe harmony. I yeah, guess, for yeah. Me. Like it, there, there was no moment that needed, like really transcended. Yeah, for I you. just needed one little build into like, oh yeah. yeah, and I just I didn't get that. So that's, no, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna give it an eight. Uh, I I think it's a great record. I it's grown on me a ton over the years. Uh, I think what keeps. I, I pretty much like every single track on it. Even Southbound again has his moments. I think there's like a really cool guitar solo on that song. Uh, but ultimately, like there could be a little more variety. I, I feel like it is kind of lacking in variety at points. And like there are a couple of songs that are kind of samey. Uh, and like, like I really like uh, Down at the Waterline, but it sounds like a little too much like Sultan's a Swing at times. Like, I think the only difference is it's just a different key, really. Uh, but it's like very similar feel. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's it, it's definitely my favorite record of theirs. I, I've tried kind of getting into their their other records, and this one for some reason just kind of felt the most consistently enjoyable. Uh, where, where he does kind of branch out a little more on future records, like sometimes. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's it's not so good. Uh, I do really like that fucking guitar tone and uh, what is it? Money for nothing. Yeah, that's a yeah. fucking that song does tone. kick ass. Yeah, actually. Song. <laughs> it's a great song. Uh, and I, I, I fucking love Walk of Life too. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the uh, happy. It's like the happiest song in the world. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, but it gets an eight for me. It only give us a seven on average. Cool. So, Again, nice. I think it's about right. Yeah. I think yeah, that's very fair. It's very fair. Definitely. Yeah. Stephen Thomas Erlewine, would you give it a 7 out of 10? He's not, he's not listening to me. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I didn't think he was in the room. No, he's not listening so, to me anymore. I'm going to talk to you about a restaurant that I saw on the way over here. Okay. Uh, called, uh, called Lazy Mary's. Ooh. Are you familiar with Lazy Mary's? I'm familiar with it. I haven't eaten there yet. She's got cat hair on all of her food. Well, uh, I wonder. <laughs> my my general question is: If you're going to open up some sort of establishment, why do you give yourself like a derogatory nickname? Like, if I opened up a place called like Stinky Christopher's, <laughs> or like well, you open up I, a place I mean, called I, like Salivating Jim's, <laughs> I would eat at Salivating. Well, like, why I would you, be tempted for Salivating Jim's? <laughs> yeah, what actually. you're lazy about? Like, what are you being lazy about? Is it about cooking? Like, cook she, no, she's she's lazy about the food sta- safety standards, right, exactly. and that's something that we don't want. <laughs> yeah, I, I would prefer that you're that you're not lazy. About I would that. go to Stinky Christopher's just out of curiosity. Yeah, I mean, what are you stinky with? Like, um. Garlic and um, I love garlic. Yeah, garlic and you know just um, dog urine. urine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's what the it's big, a the bunch big of two. fucking wild Together, dogs. Right? Like yeah, in a shake. Walking yeah, what's, what's it called? Mire en pois. Yeah, it's like marinating chicken wings and dog piss. We we can do that. <laughs> can we? Oh my god. We can. There's no reason why we can't if we sterilize it first. You know what's horrible is in this day and age. 
Someone's done that. I was going to say, I wonder if somebody's actually done that. I, I mean, you know, how did the coronavirus start? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Someone ate some fucking disgusting dog wings. <laughs> some I think it was bad, wings. but you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, check this out. I just marinated these wings in uh, Sparky's PP. Oh, sure. Let's have some. <laughs> oh, I don't feel so good. I think it's the wings, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you're never going to get them as crispy as you can with this piss. <laughs> <laughs> It get that real crispy crust that some people like. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna get that crunch without the pee. <laughs> I was thinking about that fucking Colonel Sanders botching his uh, Super Bowl ad, and he's just like, he, he's saying like that crispy crust that some people like. <laughs> like, like you made it sound like like people were weird for liking it. <laughs> well, some people like it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, w- listening to that, I feel like he was genuinely like probably not doing well physically. Like he was probably towards the end of his at uh, the end of his life because he was like, "It's you yeah, have to get the kernels extra crisp." And then you hear someone in the background be like, "It's extra crispy." He's like, "Isn't that what I said?" <laughs> like there's <laughs> no. genuine concern in his voice. Oh no. wait, is this real? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, Colonel Sanders. It's great if you can get clips of him um, from like like off the record sort of things when the mic was left on. Uh, that guy talks like a fucking trucker. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. He, he had a real bad cussing problem. Yeah, he did. Uh, and yeah, he, he lived until like 1980 or something. I didn't. Did think you know he was around? That he long. was uh, him and him and uh, Dave Thomas were friends. Yeah, he worked at fucking KFC. Yeah, Dave Thomas. Yeah, Colonel wanted Dave Thomas to franchise a bunch of KFCs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, listened then, to that dollop too. Yeah, and then Dave Thomas uh, went off and did Wendy's instead. Yep. You know why the burgers are square? Because they don't cut corners. You got it. Oh, <laughs> Wendy's is the best. Oh, Wendy's man. is pretty good. I, I had some Wendy's the other day. I, I got one of those fucking barbecue burgers with the onion, crispy onion rings on it. Oh, fuck. You know, you are uniquely situated because where you are, you have that traffic circle there. It's where, literally oh, a circle yeah. where you can just whip around. Dude, yeah, the, so, it's the ring of fire. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so at the ring of fire, what you can do is you go to Wendy's and get a burger. Yes. Then you go to McDonald's and you get fries. Yeah. And then you go home and probably die in your sleep from yeah. what you've just eaten. <laughs> Well, you know, I have to go to. There's a Taco Bell right around there too. I have to go get my Baja Blast there. Oh, excellent! Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> a well balanced meal. I was gonna say the Dorito Crunch would really round all of that. Oh yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. So I've been trying to do the diet thing or whatever, and like I've really, really missed fast food, and um, like I'm trying to figure out things that I can eat. And I was sitting there at work, and like we get lunch catered, and like there was nothing there that I could really eat that would, you know, fit into the diet. And my boss is like, "You should go down to McDonald's and get Southwest salad." I'm like, you want to go get a fucking salad from McDonald's? He's like, "No, trust me, they're good, and they're they're not a lot of calories." So I went down there, and I got a Southwest salad. It tasted like fucking Taco Bell. I yeah. filled the Taco Bell void. With a McDonald's nice. salad. Our uh, our old coworker used to go to McDonald's to get a salad, and he'd bring his own tomatoes from home, and then he'd just like put those on the McDonald's salad and eat that for lunch. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, don't trust their tomatoes. <laughs> Do they have coronavirus? No, they're just they're. Did they're they have Corona Light? Oh, that's that's a really good joke. Yeah, that's yeah. Very well, good. well, well done on that joke. You guys I, like me. <laughs> I love you. I love you so much, and your humor. You guys chose me as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I choo choo choose you. Yeah. Joel, thanks for coming on the show, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for having me, Pat. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So, uh, would you cake up to anything these days? Our, our bass player is in Argentina, so we're just working on a record, and nice. that's gonna come out, I think, this summer. It's already been recorded, nice. so we're just working out the the kinks for it. We'll find some artwork. We'll do all that good stuff. How many songs? Um, that's a good question. I think there's eleven. Nice, nice. Yeah, we Full definitely record. once we hit ten, we're like, oh, this is a real record now. Great. <laughs> that's how it goes. Baby. Yep. Yeah. It's nice. Where are you guys recording it? At home or? Studio? We actually recorded it in a church in Jamaica Plain. Oh no, kid! That's and awesome. Yeah, the vocals are really fantastic. There's all these like red curtains behind Pat O'Hare, our singer. Yeah. And there's all of this like stained glass and whatnot, and he's just screaming rock vocals as loud as he possibly can. So it's like super reverb Oh, it was amazing. Well, we had so many different mic setups that there's all these tight mics and then we oh, wow. also have the room of the whole church. Yeah. So That's it, really cool. it, it was really fantastic. We almost did drums in there 
And then I was just like, yeah, John Bonamarty owns that field. So we moved yeah. the drums to a different smaller room to yeah. not get the levee breaks all over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, uh, it's kind of hard you know, to pull that down when it's... Yeah, when it's, once, I hate yeah, yeah, once you get an 80-foot ceiling, you know, there's no going back from there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited for that. So we'll see when uh, when that happens. Did you ever very use cool. the sample from uh, Hallgram's Kirkia for anything? The Cathedral in Iceland? I don't think so. I think I printed something just to show you, but I don't yeah. think I ever used it. Yeah, Very that, cool. That was great when we were trying to get that convolution, and that woman was fucking talking the whole time. So basically, we're in this church, and like, no one is talking. They're being respectful because it's a goddamn church. And all I wanted to do was just clap really loud so Jim could record it, and we could get a convolution out of it. And this old woman was just talking to her friend. Oh, I got lunch. It cost $20. <laughs> and I, it got, I, it came with a beer. And she's just fucking clucking away over there to this guy who... <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Can you shut the fuck up? We're trying to disrespect this church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I ended up going over it because I was actually sick during that trip. So I, I walked over to, <laughs> towards them and started coughing in their general area <laughs> to try to get them to leave. <laughs> Good. Infect the church just to get a clap off. I see. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, get your clap off. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's showbiz, baby. That's right. Baby. Oh man, is Fred Durst here? <laughs> baby. 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 I don't know, is there someone who's singing and sounding like they're about to burst into tears with every lyric? <laughs> oh man, we, we got another comment on the uh juke on that jukebox zeros episode no, that you're like, on Jesus. of results may vary. Uh the on our like YouTube uh channel for it, they 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 were like fucking pissed off that they were making it's fun fucking of amazing again. how people defend them yeah i, I liked how they were Only talking on about youtube I, I liked how they were talking about the cringeworthy jokes oh yeah and it's like <laughs> you're defending limp biscuit by calling the humor making fun of it cringeworthy yeah like, jesus seriously <laughs> amazing fuck what a what a hill to die on jim limp biscuit you got anything going on i'll plug my bloggy yeah uh bloggy. Bill- <laughs> buildingastudio.wordpress.com It's up to date. You can follow my antics. I found my GoPro finally, so maybe I'll actually do some video stuff. Nice. Yeah, do yeah. some time lapse. Yeah, I'll do some time lapse of me yelling at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Should just do a time lapse of you setting up your drum kit and then you breaking it back down. I have a time lapse of me setting up my drum kit. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny. We so we were having dinner with my parents and. Uh, Emily was, or my parent, my dad was asking how the studio bill was going, and and uh, I think she, he was asking Emily like how she's dealing with me down in the basement. She's like, oh, you know, every once in a while I hear like bang bang, drill drill. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 That's so funny, Christopher. Uh, yeah, just check out the other shows in the Zero Science Network: Jukebox Zeros, Clenshell Case Files, Discography Deep Dive, all of them. Cool, cool. And also listen. the Easy to the Noise albums out. The very last one. We're never doing another one oh, again. Oh, it's not out yet. Goodbye. It's not out yet, apparently, because it's there's not. no order to anything anymore, and life no. is chaos. Isn't this, uh, this oh, is all this is 215. Yes. All right, so, so we're working on it. We're working on it. It's in progress, but you can check out uh, this new compilation that I uh, that I put together. Uh, yeah, it dropped yesterday. It dropped yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Bots for Oz, a benefit for the Australian wildfires. Oh, uh, that's nice. Yeah, proceeds will be going to uh, the Australian wire f- Wildfire Relief Fund. And uh, yeah, so basically we got like 20-odd tracks of local Boston artists covering Australian bands. And a few okay. Boston expats as well. Yeah, a few expats as well. But uh, yeah, like, you know, we got like King Gizzard, fucking Kylie Minogue. Uh, there are three Kylie Minogue covers. There are three Kylie Minogue <laughs> covers, two of which being the same song. Uh, That's amazing. In- including like some like other weirder bands like Birthday Party and Regurgitator and shit like that uh, and Hiatus Coyote nice. uh, yeah actually that, that smell does a Hiatus Coyote cover is it Nakamura? yep yeah I nailed it <laughs> how'd you know? that's just like the that's best the song. one that's yeah. just the one yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah Dominic's girlfriend Jesse sang vocals on oh, it that's it great. was fucking incredible I'm excited yeah. to check that out yeah I'm pretty proud of that one and we've got big balls Oh, and we're covering big balls. That's right. The three of us and John Sassor as Rampikes. Yes. <laughs> that was possibly the greatest thing ever put to tape. 
Yes, uh, your vocal delivery is uh, second to none. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's saying a lot, thanks. So, yeah, that compilation is going to be available at uh, bozforoz.bandcamp.com. That's B-O-Z-4-F-O-R-Oz, O-Z.com. Yeah, dot bandcamp.com. So, so give them your money and buy a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. You're going to have t-shirts? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some t-shirts, I think, with okay. that logo. Nice. Of course I know this because today is the 15th and yesterday is the 14th when... This was all released. Right. But the t-shirts might be after. That's fine. Well, we could do the t-shirts now. We could. Yeah. I mean, the now, now, not the episode. When is now? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Where is there? I'm frightened. (laughs) When is time? (laughs) Yeah, see, all all the disembodied voices you're hearing now exist outside of time. That's kind of fucked up. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's the only way we have time to record this podcast. (laughs) We have to do it outside of time. Yeah. And it's, yet, tough. it's tough with like, you know, work and kids and everything and pets. And it's no easier doing it outside of time because sooner or later the Langoliers are going to come and eat up the whole place. Exactly. You got to go back eventually. Yeah, exactly. Stinks. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> This has been another installment of Old Men Yell at Cloud. Uh, check out all the other shows on the Zero Science Network. Why don't you? Because they're a lot of fun. And fucking, like, go on iTunes. Give us a rating. Give us a five. Give us a one. If you give us a one. Give, tell us why. Tell us why. Challenge us, you cowards. Yeah. And, and, like, give us a few sentences. Don't just be like, you guys are stupid. And fucking dude, Christopher doesn't like Steve Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick doesn't like Foster the People. Yeah. <laughs> Jim doesn't like Rivers Cuomo. <laughs> yeah. No, that Good was, story. uh, you might <laughs> think that Patrick review. was just riffing there, but that was actually a verbatim, uh, comment that we've received. <laughs> yeah, that was from, uh, that's actually beautiful. I think I might like that comment. Is that possible? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go, it's I'm actually gonna write it on there right now. <laughs> I prefer just a one worder. I don't need a few sentences. Just give me one word. One string, uh, just a run on. Yeah, you could just not words. use any spaces. That's very creative. Yep. But, you know, just like shit. Because <laughs> it could be like they the shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. that could be, I don't know. Yeah, iTunes would take that down, huh? They can't. But do it that. on YouTube, absolutely. Or Bandcamp. You can absolutely put it Oh, you, you want. YouTube is the Wild West. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, wild I, West then, you know? So I had, a, I had a video go viral a few years ago. And policing the comments thread on that was a fucking full time job for like the two days that the video was popular. You just gotta let them ride. The best no, I'm not gonna let someone just fucking post th- their thoughts on Israel on a fucking video of Teletubbies <laughs> in it. All right, okay, you're right. <laughs> oh, I actually saw that them. video. I know what you're talking about. That okay. one, that one yes. was amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. The best one that I have on there is a video. He th- bought an I actual think, um, Teletubby with the proceeds. Oh, really? Yeah. No. It, did you? He did. Was, did you film him? He's got one blocked his face. I did not. No. Yeah, that's what, that's kind of what I'm thinking, Pat. Yeah. Which he beats one? it. Wait, who? The Teletubby. What color though? I mean, red. It's Poe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, that tops anything that I have. So. Yeah, I, I used to hate fucking responding to app reviews back when I worked at that last job. Because <laughs> like yeah. people, would, yeah, just, it was just like people would be fuck like saying the shittiest fucking obnoxious like poorly written shit and I have to respond back like oh gee whiz we're sorry but we're doing our best to improve <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so pathetic well, it's, it's so fucking pathetic when well, companies do that 99% of people who reach out to a company or something like that want to complain they're not they don't like, getting respond. in touch to give you a pat on the back the people who actually like shit aren't getting in touch no they're like I'll get I'll get in touch with you when something fucks up but for now we're not I'm glad that I got what I paid for. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in to Old Men Yellow Cloud. I'm Patrick. I'm Christopher. I'm Jim. We'll see you in hell.
Zero science. Lils and Patrick are two local musicians from the New England area whose minimal accomplishments have left them thoroughly unqualified to judge bands and artists who have been more successful than they ever could be. And yet